Hey Alaska, it's U.S. Senator Dan Sullivan here. Wanted to give you a quick update on some of the things going on in D.C. A lot of my focus, in fact, the whole congressional delegation's focus in the last couple of weeks is dealing with the severe impact of the typhoon, Typhoon Murbach, that hit Western Alaska hard. Uh, I'm glad to say after pushing the federal government pretty darn hard over the last several days, we were able to get uh, uh, the federal government to agree to a 100% coverage in terms of eligibility for emergency uh, assistance costs in the next 30 days. You may have heard this is what Puerto Rico got. And all I said to the federal government, the Biden administration, hey, Puerto Rico's getting this, so should Western Alaska. Finally won that argument yesterday. The government declared that. Now it's important for people who need the assistance. If your home was damaged, if your um, uh, snow machine or four wheeler or, or subsistence nets or anything like that, boats were damaged. And we know there was a lot of damage uh, in the communities, small businesses. Now is the time to apply. Under this federal assistance program, it's about 30 days. So we wanna encourage everybody, even if you don't think you qualify for assistance or are unsure, you can get more information uh, for state help at the following website, ready.alaska.gov. And for federal help, it's disasterassistance.gov. You can also call this very helpful number. I just called it actually, and I got somebody on the line immediately who did a great job checking in with them. This number for help for all Alaskans, 1-844-445-7131. Let me give you an update on a couple other things, but we need to continue to keep the people in Western Alaska in our prayers as well as the people in Florida who are going through a rough time as well with uh, Hurricane uh, uh, Ian. Another big issue we've been working on, well, I've been working on literally since I got here a number of years ago, but made a, a fair amount of progress this week was on the issue of permitting reform. We didn't get a bill over the goal line, but right now I'm part of a small group of senators, bipartisan group of senators. We have to get efficient, timely, comprehensive permitting done so we can build roads and bridges and ports and all of the above energy projects in this country. Our broken permitting system, some of you know I've been saying this for years, is really undermining the huge potential of Alaska, huge potential of America. I'm going to keep fighting and working on this one. If you have ideas on it, please let my office know. This is an issue, might sound wonky, might sound boring, permitting reform, it actually is critical, especially to our state, because often we are a place that's ground zero for abuse of the federal permitting system. Let me talk about a related topic, the issues of the Willow Project and the Ambler Road Project. That is where the federal government and Groups that don't want any development in Alaska, the lower 48 radical environmental groups, have been trying to use the permitting system against what I think are really important projects that can help so many in our state, particularly so many in our native communities. So just this past week, um, Senator Murkowski and I wrote letters on Willow. That included uh, Congresswoman Peltola and on Ambler to senior federal government officials saying we need to move these projects forward for the benefit of Alaska, our rural communities, but for the benefit of America. Our country needs oil, gas, critical minerals, and we have those in huge abundance in our state. Finally, I just wanna mention one other thing. I think many of you know of an important role of the Senate has been the advice and consent role when there are treaties of the United States government with other countries. I mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a treaty bringing on Finland and Sweden as new members of NATO. I was able to amend the advice and consent accession language in the Senate 
to make sure it's clear that yes, we're gonna bring on these new NATO members, but all NATO members need to do their fair share in terms of their own defense. The goal is 2% of each country's gross domestic product. That's what every NATO country has agreed to. I put strong language in there saying, NATO countries, America can't do it all. You need to step up and meet your commitments. That passed in the Senate. Uh, I was proud to see that happen. That is a message to our NATO allies on burden sharing where they need to do more, to be quite frank. Another message in a, tr in a treaty that we had advice and consent votes on this past week, it was an amendment to the Montreal Protocol, which is an environmental treaty, and it was called the Kigali um, Amendment to the Protocol. Protocol. The amendment that I put in this treaty was actually one I think is very important. The Kigali, Amend the Kigali Treaty, the Montreal Protocol, they still treat China as a, quote, developing country. That means in these international agreements, China has to um, abide by them in terms that are much less stringent than the United States does. China gets funding to implement these treaties from the UN. Much of that money comes from America's taxpayers. And I put an amendment to the advice and consent resolution in the Senate saying, no more, no more. China is not a developing country. It's the second largest economy in the world. It's industrialized. So my amendment said, in order to have the advice and consent of the Senate for this treaty, the Secretary of State is required to go to the UN, put forward instruments in this treaty, removing China from the annex that has the developing countries listed. China will no longer be that from the US perspective. Let's hope the Secretary can get that done and get other countries to agree with us but we think this is an important precedent set in international agreements, international treaties. China should no longer be viewed as a poor developing country. They try to game the system. We shouldn't let them do it. And I'm proud to say my Senate resolution amendment passed 97 to zero in the U.S. Senate. That's a quick update. Hope to see you all back at home soon. And um, Hope you're enjoying uh, a lovely fall. I'll see you home soon.